This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. No real job, no, because I don't want to take that mess. Working down at UPS. Talk Radio 790 KABC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. Ah, this is a formal media retraction, huh? That the man who played Carl Gerber, workplace lawyer, in the last few episodes is not, in fact, Carl Gerber. There has been a case of mistaken identity. According to his calendar, the real Carl Gerber, workplace lawyer, has not even been in Los Angeles during the last 82 days. He spent one weekend at Hollywood Beach in Oxnard has been otherwise viewing Lifetime movies about spousal abuse with his wife in desolate California counties when not practicing the art of evasion and kickboxing gyms across California and considering whether his eldest son will get admitted to Caltech or MIT. And no, he's not a member of the Audubon Society. Well, gee, I thought I was here every Sunday in the studio since late April. I... (laughs) I, I must have been at another radio station the last 82 days. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. You know what, guys? I, I am Carl Gerber, workplace lawyer, and I am a real workplace lawyer. I'm licensed in California, and I want you to exercise your vote. Whether Justice Chav should be confirmed, call the station at 800-222-5222 to say yay or nay on this confirmation. The results will be sent over to that uh, flaky Republican senator. Call 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222 to put in your vote. But otherwise, I've got a guest in studio, and it's the truant officer lines, and i got to get to it with him. So, hey, uh, Fred Lines, this is weird because the last time I saw you, that was around the time Brad... uh, Chav was out at large exposing himself. Uh, we've all come a long way since the days of the Lemur brothers. But you haven't gained any hair. Believe me, I've tried. Uh, sometime this century, my signature style extended itself beyond Detective Kojak. I'm not going to sit around here babbling all night. The listeners here demand hardcore legal analysis of the employment law variety. If you can't talk the language of the Fair Employment and Housing Act or the Labor Code, I suppose they're going to have to go back to the district. I've been denied the opportunity to apply for work at the university. (laughs) Everyone knows the university doesn't take applications. They seek out the weirdest, although possibly the brightest in the field, regardless of whether they're living or dead. You're not making any sense. Remember, it will eventually. Lemur, you're talking nonsense. Oh, wow. Well, I haven't heard anyone call me Lemur in almost 35 years. <laughs> Woo! But on another note, uh, just last week, Alan Abel joined the faculty at the university. He's now teaching graduate level advertising and marketing courses. Uh, that old kook really died this time. Yeah, he faked his death before, and Cindy D saw him at the university when she dropped off her daughter. After the game on Sunday, I saw footage of Stephen Colbert and Sasha Baron Cohen carrying Alan Abel's casket. I believe Andy Kaufman and Anita Orchid Helms were there, too. I understand that in the early days of modems, you proclaimed many untrue truths that became truths in the modem community. But Alan Abel is dead this time. No more hoaxes. What if he were to appear on the show next week? Be honest. Had you ever heard of Omar's School of Beggars before last week? I try to make these shows timely to involve, you know, all the major issues in the news for the week. Truthfully, I didn't even know who Alan Abel was until last Friday when I read his second obituary in the Los Angeles Times print edition. Well, that's what I thought all along. I've known you a long time. Uh, But he's... Game for the show, given all the comedians who are fans of the show. I'm going to put them on next week. Look, if dead guys can be on the faculty of the graduate school part of the university, 
I am eminently qualified to work at the pre-university level. Undeniably, <laughs> no. Your claim to fame is the Lemur Brothers provided you with leads on child molesters who were trolling the online world before there was even an organized internet. I heard on episode 21 of this here show that the university now takes grades K through 12 if their IQs are high enough. I figured with my track record, 30 years at LAUSD and 25 years at the Santa Clarita District. Other than having the listeners add up all these years and determine your age, what's the point? I was thinking that since I'm about to get my second pension, I should apply to work at the university now that they have K-12. through Again, they don't take applications. I'm... Also not sure how many truant minors they might have as all the students are geniuses. Clay, as you know, my most famous case involved Lemur Jr., who trailed off after attending one day in eighth grade and had written the original Lemur connection when he was around 12 and the main multi-user system in Los Angeles when he was 14. God, Fred, it's been a long time. I'm CLE, not Clee. I can tell you the university doesn't take applications. Look, I, I don't buy that. I, I'm pretty sure they discriminated against me. If the employer, whether they are a university or a for-profit corporation, never takes unsolicited applications, they can't be guilty of discriminating against someone who wants to apply. Well, this is more nonsense. Don't companies have to take applications? I'm positive the university is not under an EOC consent decree or an order requiring them to affirmatively look for candidates of all backgrounds. Uh, but all their faculty is super weird. The list of bona fide job qualifications for the university include highly eccentric, beyond uh, reason with ability, unorthodox methods, genius level IQ, unusual accomplishments, and the sort of, kind of in the case of William Citus, unusual lack of accomplishment after being the youngest man to ever graduate from Harvard. Oh, yeah? Well, they then discriminated against me on the basis uh, I don't have none of those characteristics. Uh, the bona fide job qualifications at the university are not protected characteristics under the Fair Employment and Housing Act or one of the titles. Sir, I've worked at my share of Title I schools. The titles I was referring to are Title VIII, the ADA, and the ADEA, otherwise known as Age Discrimination and Employment Act, which is federal. I called the university. That's not possible. I swear I picked up the receiver and dialed. Hmm. Uh, with a really outdated black dial tone phone, you could have made a connection to the university. <laughs> Correction. I have a red dial tone. You originally validated new users on a red phone. <laughs> CLE used a touch tone in the early days of the Lemur connection. Gosh, probably a lot of the youngsters listening don't even know what we're talking about or the difference between a dial tone phone and a push button phone. Isn't that sort of a point? To isolate your listeners? Uh, no, just that guy, the one guy who called in who actually thinks Judge Chav as a <laughs> qualified to be on the Supreme Court. But uh, no, uh, that's how instructions happen at the university. Look, I heard at the higher levels the professor's lecture out, out the window here, okay? Use unintelligible accents. I might just say one word in part of a sentence and then a few words from other sentences. See, I know how they work. Yeah, we still have the issue with the university never accepts applications and it not being so clear that they need a truant officer. That's the point. They might need one if they never had one. Fred, how can you show you are not hired due to a protected characteristic if you haven't even identified uh, when no one has ever held the job you want and there's no evidence that the position of a truant officer well, is needed. So here we are, guys, 
Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. If you want to call and get into a fight with me about politics or about a real employment case, call 877-525-0700 for a real case. That's 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700. You have been listening to Talk Radio, KBC 790. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a consistent force in fighting for the rights of California employees. They've represented thousands of employees in cases in which they've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed wages individually or as a group such as a class action. The Employment Lawyers Group has maintained a high win rate and a serious record before the California courts. Please call 877-525-0700 for an experienced work lawyer. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, research the firm at worklawyerca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. If you hire the Employment Lawyers Group, your legal problem becomes theirs to solve. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-501-3689 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-501-3689. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-501-3689 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-501-3689. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-390-9528. That's 800-390-9528. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. The help you need could be one call away. 800-390-9528. Make the free call now. 800-390-9528. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit your addiction team com forward slash turns for more information. Right now is the best time to buy jeans that make you look and feel your best because Macy's has your favorite Levi's jeans at the lowest prices of the season. Levi's men's jeans like the 502 regular taper, 505 regular, and the 514 straight start at just $36.99. And the Levi's women's 720 high rise super skinny and mile high super skinny start at just $35.99. Yes, $35.99. But these prices are only for a limited time. So get to Macy's and Macy's.com today. Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-501-3689 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800 800- 800-501-3689. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales looking director you're looking for. But when you post on indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience, who's also fluent in Japanese. 
With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. The show is fit, hard to cold. I'm like Coke, yellow, RC Cola. Ain't no really need to argue, though. No, it's all love in L.A. Call me Art the Bow. The king of rock, the grown without the shoelace. On any given night, a new crowd, a new place. A pile of cushion fresh out the suitcase. We roll it up like we was out of toothpaste. And when I grill, I throw down a few steaks. And then I chill and ask how the food tastes. They probably say, suck your lips and tell Bobby Flay, suck a dick, because I love it. Temperament is pretty important, too. You know, even if um, you have a judge at maybe didn't do something bad there's got to be some judicial temperament remember these are the people that sentence people to life in jail forever maybe the death penalty you got to have a thick skin but anyways back to our show here i've got officer lines who wasn't able to get a job at the university which is a very strange school they don't actually take applications so i don't think he's going to have too much to stand on for the failure to hire case. So, Fred, let's get back to this. What do you have yeah. to say? Well, first of all, then it's my double dipping, okay? If they didn't want to hire you because you got the LAUSD to hold off on truancy charges for Lemur Jr. because the Lemur brothers were giving you all sorts of information that helped you nab truant students who were their enemies or child molesters. Maybe that's double dipping the university isn't comfortable with. I just sort of like the idea of double dipping. Yeah? Seriously. I always wanted to double dip. I'm feeling like you aren't talking about the quid pro quo you had with the Lemur brothers on intelligence. I am not. Oh, God, no. I, I can't picture you double dipping in the Remus Helms way. Actually, uh, I applied at the university because I wanted to triple dip. I believe that is called MF. F, at least that's what Cindy D told me. I presume MFF, but maybe in Remus Helms' case, I I'm sorry, Demas' case, MMF. I'm talking MMM. about pensions here. I am talking about pensions. A uh, figure is <laughs> a man of your, <laughs> your <laughs> habits. It never changes. Okay. No, I got my LAUSD pension after 30 years. That's one dip. I'm about to retire from the Santa Clarita District. I was double dipping when I drew a salary from the Santa Clarita District and got my pension from LAUSD. I wanted to triple dip by drawing <laughs> emoluments from the university and double dipping in two separate government pensions. Uh, you know, I'm not a criminal lawyer, and I'm not an Arisha or a pension lawyer, but I'm not so sure you're supposed to get a full pension from two school districts. This is why I think the university refused to take my application. Why? You're committing pension fraud? I get 85% of my salary through CalPERS from LAUSD. Now, I'm a CalSTRS. I'm not sure there's any such thing as double dipping because you've worked for two school districts that are both part of the same pension plan. I'm Again, I'm not an ERISA lawyer. You really should have had someone read these pension rules before you put in 25 years at a different school district in California that's probably part of the same pension plan as LAUSD. Carl, I was wondering something, okay? How come... You've never decided to become a judge. You'd get a good pension with all your writing experience. You'd make a great Supreme Court justice. And the problem with me becoming a Supreme Court justice is I just, I haven't ever really sexually harassed anybody. I, <sighs> I think that's a bona fide job qualification for the high court, at, at least as a Republican nominee. <clears throat> Carl. Are you going to take any one of all those calls that just came in? Okay, it says all the lines to the radio station have callers holding. Nah, we're in the middle of a conversation. Uh, well, it looks like you've got a lot of female admirers. I yeah, wish I did. Uh, yeah, I recognize a few of those names. That's uh, weird. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We, we got you, audience. Unfortunately, at least for me, becoming a United States Supreme Court justice, I, I don't have a record of sexual harassment or drunken grinding. I've, I've never even dated someone from work or tried to. You know, 
th- there was nothing wrong with asking out the ladies in the district during the 60s, 70s, and hell, even the 80s. Look, everybody did. I, I mean, at least I tried. I should get an A for effort. Fred, you must be close to 80. Uh, you have two exceptional pensions. Haven't you had enough of chasing down truant students? Hey, Lemure, I'm going to continue on at some district until I am 100. The university won't hire me, okay? Can't you put in a good word for me? Yeah, I haven't really seen you since the mid-80s. <laughs> Wait a minute, um... You you were a no-show for Moonshine's truancy trial. Why was that? This is why it is heavily speculated there was no officer lines. He was either one and the same with one or both Lemure brothers, or he was something they concocted through hacking the LAUSD computers. I, I never really gave us all that thought. Look... The least you can do for me is put in a good word for me at the university, okay? I I know you are a creator of it. I am, I am here after all these years to prove we really aren't the same people. I, I probably gave you the most important reference in your life. First off, I'm not sure anyone listening has ever speculated we're one and the same people. Regardless, I, I never put you down as a reference when I applied for lawyerships in California, Massachusetts, Texas, or Washington, D.C. The most important man of Sun Valley, at least as of the present, called for a reference on you many years ago. Uh, it was during those tender times in which his genital was being infringed and He sought the best possible legal representation, and you were but a a new admittee with an entire career ahead of you, ready to make a name for yourself. Uh, You know, had you never said something positive about me, maybe Remus Helms never would have called me in 1994, and I, I never would have had all these ridiculous show guests he always seems to have some association to. Look, I must also add that all of your guests were at one time on the radar of me, having bouts of truancy or having a child who did. It is no small coincidence that these guests are both known to myself and Remus Helms. Fred, no one really cares about all this ancient business and your conspiracy theories. I, I don't mean conspiracy as in, you know, the Lemur Brothers rival modem gang that the Lemur Brothers shut down. Uh, one of the brothers had everywhere known to uh, mankind in the five and a quarter inch floppy disk community. Mm. Mm. I mean, the listeners are just dying to learn the nuances of employment law and probably are engrossed by our discussion about failure to hire cases that I never take because there are a million reasons why someone is not hired and who is to say they would have had a stellar career at a job they never had? You're awful, okay? There are more rejections in the employment process than I've had over the years with the ladies. You know, no employment lawyer is going to take a case or make a practice out of a failure to hire case. If there's a group who systematically aren't hired like one of the first class actions in employment law, a sex discrimination case against farmers, hmm. that's one thing. But private lawyers don't really take failure to hire cases. You're kidding. What's the damage if the person denied employment ends up being offered the next job they interview for? It's not practical. It's not a practical portion of a private employee law practice. Again, maybe if there's a whole group systematically denied the opportunity to ever have a job, that might be something. Uh, Well, I remember you telling me you reported an employer to the EEOC when you were looking for a job in college, and the person who answered the phone told you they preferred a female. Yeah, um, I doubt we were communicating by then, but that did happen. Then you should take every case for every person denied employment. Fred, you got to be practical. You have to prove you're qualified for the job, but then you got to prove you're denied the job based upon age, gender, including, you know, status, uh, disability, pregnancy, race, sex, things like that. Then they discriminated against me because of my age. (laughs) Professor Abel is 94. William Situs is 
been dead for years and will be well over 100. Pascal has been dead for 300 years. I guarantee you the university doesn't discriminate based on age. I also hear they recently hired Demas Helms for high school art. I deduce through a cross-examination of him on the show that he's 72. Well, I am even older. Yeah, I, I understand that, but at the university level, uh, you know, Robert Crumb is teaching satire, comic book art, and a political science course on Haight-Ashbury counterculture during the 60s. He's 75. Anybody who makes an X-rated movie about a cat should go to hell. Ah, uh, that's it. I'm going to have to remove you from the show, and when we come back, we're going to have to find out more about Officer Lines. But anyone who insults, you know, Fritz the Cat, I don't know. Call me for a real employment case, 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700 for a real labor lawyer, 877-525-0700. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer, call 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, read more about the firm at employeelawca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Make your work problem theirs to solve. Talk Radio 790, KABC News Update. I'm Steve Cummins. Tickets went on sale today for the one-game National League West Division tiebreaker tomorrow afternoon between the Dodgers and the Colorado Rockies at Dodger Stadium. It starts at 1.07 p.m. Both teams enter the regular season tied with 91-71 records, forcing the one-game playoff for the division crown. The winner of the Dodgers-Rockies game will host the first two games of the National League Division Series against the East Division winner Atlanta Braves. The loser of tomorrow's tiebreaker will play the loser of tomorrow's Cubs-Brewers tiemaker in the wildcard game. Governor Brown has signed two bills into law. One requires all publicly traded companies in California to have at least one woman on its board of directors by the end of next year. The other blocks Internet providers from slowing down access or from charging streaming companies more to deliver faster service. KABC SoCal weather mostly clear tonight with lows in the upper 50s to mid-60s. More news coming up in 30 minutes. Continuing coverage at KABC.com. I'm Steve Cumming, Talk Radio 790, KABC News. Ah, the sounds of summer. And this is the sound of summer skin being scratched because of the itching and irritation of what the season can bring. You need the fast relief of Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing Anti-Itch Cream. Unlike regular lotions, Cortisone 10 relieves itch and irritation with 1% hydrocortisone, the strongest non-prescription itch medicine, plus seven healing moisturizers. Cortisone 10 makes summer sound fun again. Cortisone 10. Feel the heel. Use as directed. On this episode of the world's shortest sitcom by KFC. Like I always say, it's the inside that counts. Aww. Like what's inside my new KFC 10-piece chicken feast. It's 10 pieces of chicken, two large mashed potatoes, and four biscuits for $19.99. Get more meal for the family for under $20. That's what really matters. <laughs> it's pretty incredible what chicken can teach you about life. Anyways, KFC is fair looking good. At participating KFCs, prices may vary. Tax and substitutions extra. Right now, the Kohler Cimarron Comfort Height Elongated Toilet is at its lowest price at the Home Depot. Just $199. You save 50 bucks. At that price, you can raise your expectations, but leave your budget exactly where it is. And the best news of all, it's a Kohler. They never compromise. Why should you? Start with the best. The Kohler Cimarron Comfort Height Toilet, just $199 now at the number one Kohler retailer. The Home Depot. More saving. More doing. Valid through October 28th. Have you tried that trendy new dating app? You can have months of frivolous fun with people who just love to play games. But if you're ready for something more grown-up, try the Match app. 
Over 30,000 new people a day are heading to Match for grown-up conversations that lead to great dates and beyond. Our listeners that go to Match.com can start for free today. View photos and informative profiles to get a deeper sense of the people you'd like to meet. Start for free today at Match.com. That's Match.com. All right, you're listening to Talk Radio 790 KBC, the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, heard every Sunday at this time. And I'm Carl Gerber. I encourage all the listeners to go to workplacelawyer.org to hear old episodes. We've been talking to Fred Lines, who I've known since my days as a modem stud. We've had a little bit of a strained relationship throughout mm-hmm. the year. And uh, I almost threw him off because he was insulting Fritz the cat, but we made amends. Look, I spit on the newspaper when I read <laughs> Crumb's original 1969 drawing of Fritz the cat. That sold for $8.3 million. Fred, you know, you're insulting all the comic collectors and children of counterculture who are so happy to have found this outlaw radio program on the same station as uh, I, I can't say. Well, we're doing a little experiment here. We're going to see how many KCRW listeners transfer over to this particular show in the next few months. I'm aiming for about 177,000 of them. Captain Lemur eyes always set the highest bar. I'm not sure I should say this, but this show is to make KBC great again, even though it already is. <laughs> I can't hear that phrase at my age, okay? What was this country come to, all right? Our president is laughed at in front of the United Nations, and come on. Yeah, I sure have received a lot of new client calls about race discrimination in the last year and a half. It's terrible. Not to change the subject, but you really don't think that the university discriminated against me based on my age? Look, sooner or later, we've got to talk about the actual contact you have with the university, being that it's not a linear path to the university. I'm not too sure what interaction you really had. Uh, Like I said, I called. I cannot imagine the university would take a telephone call. The person who answered the phone said they didn't. Are you saying they knew it was you and they knew you were close to 80, maybe double dipping, so they discriminated against you? I said, this is Officer Lines, and I'd like to apply for a job as a truant officer at K-12. through The voice said something rude. A random person who answered the phone doesn't necessarily act on behalf of the university and bind them for an employment discrimination lawsuit. Look, I agree it might have been a random person. The university does not like to repeat any particular things unless it is ultra odd. They seem to know who I was. Obviously, uh, persons at the university are familiar with the exploits of the Lemure brothers and maybe Red Modem Stud. The events are of consequence. I've got it! The voice asked if I ever got any hair and accused me of flashing people because I wore a beige trench coat. Uh, Given what you just said, I do believe that you actually made contact with the university. I do not believe that they would answer the phone if an ordinary person called, but you were sufficiently chronicled in the news during the early to mid-80s due to events pertinent to you and the brothers, and you called in on a defunct technology. Yes, there is a public record from the truancy trial that reads like this. Uh, Allow me to put on my reading glasses. Uh, This was Moonshine talking. Uh, Apparently, there's there's a Cretan in the LAUSD by the name of Officer Lines that once has the occasion presented for him to formally meet me. He used me to get a promotion when I turned over child molesters I located through electronic means. Yes, I was there and I heard Moonshine say that. And by that time, he was no longer Lemur Jr. Can you please not make these disclosures on the air? Well, you allowed me to write the following in modem stud. I was LAUSD star witness, but I did not attend the trial. Nonetheless, I present to you a complete trial transcript. This is not, however, a literal transcript. Rather, you will hear my account of the proceedings peppered by occasional references to the certified transcript. Well, that is accurate. I remember this just like it was yesterday, although I was not there. (laughs) You were 16. Uh, Well, first you testified about the conditions of the laboratories at LAUSD. I I believe that went on for, I'd say, about two pages. (laughs) Please don't bring me back to 
trauma of an LAUSD restroom. Hey, I put up with those stalls for 30 years. Oh, I'd find truant students in a bathroom with toilet paper balls stuck to the ceiling. Oh, that god-awful smell of wet LAUSD paper towel. I Ooh. can't go back to the dirty tile, cigarette buds urinated on, please. Oh, the mid-80s truancy trials. You said the BBS is the new form of journalism. In 25 years, newspapers will be in bankruptcy. Newsweek will be sold for chump change. Books will be accessible by modem. Yeah, I did think that in the 80s. Yeah, sometimes I wonder why I'm screwing around in the legal profession, writing these shows, and that guy at the electric car company and the book and warehouse dude are mm. taking all the credit for the internet. I, I know we have a lot of young, impressionable listeners hoping to learn how to not get sued or screwed as an employee. I mm. distinctly remember that in 86, I didn't think the speakeasy and modems were cool and being a lawyer or a writer would be bad and wanting to distance myself from the modem world and our big portal into the online world. Well, youngsters, the moral of the story is stay in school and don't discount something you're the progenitor of, even if it doesn't seem cool at the time. I appreciate your advice to the miners listening. I spent my whole life in the truancy business, either as the nabber or an administrator after, of course, uh, you greatly helped my career, even though Lemure Jr. was number one on LAUSD's list. But officer lines, this is where we may have to disagree. Although I understand you came around eventually, there was no point in Lemur Jr. attending any school before the university level. Uh, there are rare cases like this. Uh, the parent must be proactive in finding better learning environments if one does not work. Well, the workplace isn't really any different. Some employees are too pigeonholed on staying at a particular job that doesn't really suit their talents or needs. But what surprises me is so many people testify about terrible sexual harassment or wage abuse that happened to them at work, and then they say it was otherwise such a cool job. Well, are you saying I should have risen above truant officer and administrator of vast truancies? I'm doubtful about that. Well, are you saying people are gluttons for punishment? I think a lot of employees lack proper reference points. Many of the employment torts or unpaid wage scenarios I see, they involve susceptible people, people who haven't had a lot of work experience, you know, victims of sexual abuse or child child abuse, people who have not been given enough good opportunities and they assume an abhorrent work environment is the way of the world. I've been with school districts my whole life. And by the way, I forgot to mention I started out as a physical ed teacher, but at the bars I've heard about, a lot of bad work environments. Presumably yeah. these bars weren't the speakeasy system. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. You know, some people, sometimes people sit on bar stools to bitch about life, but you know, Crappy jobs drive people to drink. Oh, I'm sure of that. The incident of alcohol abuse is highest amongst lawyers and doctors. Here are the statistics, guys. Lawyers are high, but 15% of all healthcare workers have drinking problems, especially mm. if they're at the hospital level. Mining has the highest rate of alcoholism, 17.5%. Construction, 16.5%. Entertainment and the arts, 11 percentile. Educators are actually the lowest end of the spectrum of the high incidence of alcoholics, with only 4% of educators being alcoholics. <laughs> Since you're in law, construction, and entertainment, <laughs> you must be a drunk. <laughs> Actually, I don't drink at all. How can I possibly have time when I'm doing three separate occupations? And that's not a joke. I think employees can either take the stress or they can't. But these jobs where you're you're seeing terrible things day in and day out, are, they're not easy. The cases I have often deal with deplorable workplace events. Did you read about the Facebook moderators? Of course. I read about all the workplace trends. I didn't know they had moderators looking at every beheading and rape video some moron tried to post or all the racist rants. Yeah, online moderator, it's a real hard job. I, I can tell you, I was the original online moderator and content creator. Yeah, Fast Eddie. I, I mean, CLE. Uh, the real old schools know that fact. Back then, I was moderating the problematic post involving a lot of gay bashing, threats of violence that would never happen, mm. postings of private information, of course, which was allowed if it related to an enemy of these sysops. Actually, there were sometimes hate rants from losers who turned against the Lemur brothers or whatever we called ourselves at that particular moment. Did you ever need to treat for the stress of all that? 
No, but it seems the content Facebook has to moderate is a lot worse. It would be interesting to see what kind of training they give on how to deal with the stress and whether they screen applicants on the ability to deal with horrific content all day long. I, I don't mean horrific content like <laughs> some of the other talk shows and the other stations. Well, there's no way I can make the university give me a job. If the remedies for discrimination requiring reinstatement, but these are not realistic options if you never held the job. I recall one very famous discrimination lawsuit was won, and it required an institute to admit a student who was denied entry due to race, but... Problem was, the student was already done with their graduate work by the time the legal decision came out. Wait, you aren't insinuating I'll be dead by the time my case is over. I expect you to live into eternity, or at least as long as I'm alive. Well, that's good to hear. Fred, I'd hope you would have come on the show to reminisce a little, but this week we've had a lot of bad things in the news, and I, I really hope to cover the Iranian diaper crisis. Are you merely uh, substituting sanitary napkins for diapers? No, there really is what has been proclaimed an Iranian diaper crisis. We're going to talk about that when we get back. If you want to insult me at the office about a legal case, call me at 877-525-0700 for a real employment case, 877 877- Five two five zero seven hundred. Once again, eight seven seven five two five zero seven hundred. You're listening to Talk Radio seven ninety KBC. The Employment Lawyers Group is a results-driven law firm whose goal is to get the right result for the client. They have represented employees with a high rate of success since 1993 throughout the state of California. They're only paid and if they are able to collect money from the employer so there's not any upfront fees or costs in order to hire them. They have represented thousands of employees who've been terminated from their jobs, sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or are owed wages in an individualized or group basis such as a class action. Call 877-525-525. 0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have operators standing by. They can also be reached at employeelawca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Hire them and make your workplace problem theirs to solve. They chew up the furniture. Don't do that. Bark uncontrollably. I don't get it. It's just the mailman. And make us pick up their waste in public. Still, we love them unconditionally. (laughs) Fall in love with your next furry little friend at the Subaru Loves Pets Pet Adoption, Saturday, October 13th from 10 to 4 at the SPCALA in Long Beach. 790 KABC will be there, along with dozens of adorable companions in search of a forever home. Be one of the first 100 to adopt and receive a free Subaru Loves Pets parent pack at Subaru. They believe pets help make the world a better place. And we couldn't agree more. The Subaru Loves Pets Pet Adoption, Saturday, October 13th. For more info, go to kabc.com. Brought to you by the all-new 3-Row 2019 Subaru Ascent. Love is now bigger than ever. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to Carl Gerber, Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. Before we broke, we were talking to Officer Lines about his failure to hire case, which I kind of dismissed because the place he wanted to uh, work doesn't take applications. We've had a, a contest going on about whether Judge Chav should be elevated to the Supreme Court and they're too many calls to tabulate. I'm going to have to give you the results online or a little bit later. So, Fred, um, yeah. I want to get to this Iranian diaper crisis. Yeah, the diaper thing. Okay. Uh, look, my word. All right. What has this world come to, okay? Sh- should I go to little Tehran and start a drive? Now, that might not be a bad idea, but I don't know what kind of tariffs our own government impose on you for your humanitarian efforts. Uh, You might have read fake news. Yes, this is again a Los Angeles Times article I read. I I know there are more reliable sources on the internet, and Mm -hmm. in all probability they're written by someone in another country. I might be an old man, but I can pull up anything on my eye tablet. Yep, that's a sign of someone under 12 or over 16. No one uses tablets anymore. Wow, you aren't making this up. My statistics on tablet use? No, the Iranian diaper crisis. Apparently, authorities in Iran are seizing contraband, which are 
plastic diapers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is a material shortage in Iran brought on by hyperinflation. So if the price of diapers have tripled in the last few months, do you think I should invest in Iranian diapers in dispense of my dream of suing the university to make them hire me so I can triple dip. Back when I knew you, you <laughs> used I used to do a little double dipping with guacamole and salsa. Huh. I guess uh, <laughs> I, I never triple dipped. Ultra absorbent cellulose is what Iran wants and China has. Can I buy these commodities and short the market? That doesn't sound very humanitarian. Uh, Okay, on fast ed, come on, come on, look. If we short the market and control the supply, we can solve the Iranian diaper crisis. Uh, Diaper the babies of Iran and and be heroes. Yeah, I do have some connections in the community. Huh, well, look at this quote. The diaper fiasco is an example of how sudden crisis... Yes, I read that too. This is a weird story. Yes, life is as weird as a show. The story talked about uh, <laughs> long lines at a Tehran superstore advertising diaper sales, and a father calculating it cost him 14 cents every time his infant urinated. Yeah, the story has a Trump angel claiming his sanctions are to blame, and he said he would ratch up sanctions so much that instead of manufacturing missiles, Iran would shift to producing diapers, which incidentally in Persian rhymes with the word for diaper. Moshak rhymes with Poshak. I don't send my oldest to religious school for nothing. He can sing happy birthday in Farsi. This story makes an old man sad. There is another angle on diapers, uh, yeah, cloth that, diapers. <laughs> yes, that is true. I hate to admit it, but I'm so old they had cloth diapers when I was at that stage. Well, of course, diaper deliveries. Now, there's a job that no longer exists. There are some parents who swear by cloth still. At mm. any rate, my wife and I took a class before our first was born. The guy who streams a show, you know, somebody teaching the class in 2003 claimed they were still using their kids' cloth diapers to detail their car. Now that's disgusting. So we've gone from the laughter at the UN to being denied the ability to apply at a fictional university that doesn't take applications to rates of alcoholism in various professions, the Iranian diaper Mm. crisis. I'd say we've been a bit unfocused here. I actually have another legal issue. The Santa Clarita District tried to transfer me to a completely hazardous school. Oh, that might be something. Uh, Why was it hazardous? It's the school's location. I didn't know there were bad neighborhoods in the Santa Clarita District. This is a terrible neighborhood. You risk death just getting into the school. Do you have to, like, run a collision course, like at Montasia? (laughs) That's a family fun joke about a family fun center complete with, you know, arcade, rides, bodies of water, and racing. It's different now. Uh, Truants don't go to those places during the day. I'm not getting why the school wanted to send you there if it was so dangerous. Well, every single time I got off the freeway to go there, I was taking my life in my hands. I thought Santa Clarita was one of the safest cities in America. Well, it happened gradually over time. What, we all got older? (laughs) The school got worse and worse. That tends to happen. That's why LAUSD has gone charter. Well, the test scores went down due to freeway noise and inability to concentrate. All the good teachers transferred out. Yeah, I guess an underperforming school can't retain the best teachers. It got harder and harder to get there, and the place shrank. Um, there isn't any correlation between this school and Nouveau Vogue novelty toys, old Lilliputian warehouse where they shrunk everything as there. The physical boundaries of the school kept getting reduced due to the freeway widening. I'm getting a hint of where this is going. You didn't happen to go to Burning Man, did you? <laughs> Actually, I met this woman at district headquarters, uh, quite a bit younger than me, early 60s. We rented an RV and went out there. Uh, Fred, has anyone actually gone to the school you're referring to between the north and south lanes of the 5 freeway in Santa Clarita who didn't go to Burning Man? Hmm, that seems no. He was not there. I, I was only there after I got back from the desert. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, look, but I'm serious. A lot of people quit the district because of that school. On a more real note, a new study came out this week showing that 25% of all Los Angeles employees have quit a job due to commute time. Hey, 
I'm not a quitter. Yeah, you're going to hang on the truancy field until you're 100. What else is there for me to do? Hang out with the hip lady in her 60s and experience the world? Never thought about that. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway looking for adventure and whatever comes lines way. Yeah, lines, go make it happen. Take the world in a love embrace like a true nature's child. I'm not following you. I remember the first time you called my mother to report Lemur Jr.'s lack of attendance in elementary school. She told you uh, he'd been busy programming, and you asked if we were Scientologists. You've mm. never been too keen on the lingo. I've seen plenty on bathroom walls. Well, here's the point, man. There's more to life than work. you got to get out on the highway and explore the world. Take the world in a love embrace with you, lady. You're not the one to be saying that. Read these lines, no pun intended. We were born, born to be wild. We can climb so high, I never want to die. If you want to live to 100, you shouldn't be chasing truant students, and you should head on the highway lines. Actually, I'm not too sure because, you know, intellectual stimulation is what keeps the brain alive. But on another hand, I'm not clear your job is intellectually stimulating, at least the way you do it. I don't always score. Years can go by, but every now and then I, I can encounter an unusual Yeah, uh, Just admit, your career highlight was your clandestine association with the Lemur Brothers. We sure had some big scores for the LAUSD police, I'll tell you. We shut down 1,473 drug dens in the San Fernando Valley in a span of two years and made 177 arrests of pedophiles. Yeah, actually, I'm a bit amazed there were that many drug dens catering to minors in the valley. Well, there was one in North Hollywood. We just couldn't seem to break down, I'll tell you. The whole apartment building was in on it. Except that Glickman family. Yeah, the Calls Apartments was the low of the San Fernando Valley culture during that period. You know, Lisa Glickman was on the show a few months ago telling us that depending on which door you knocked on at the Calls Apartment, you had your choice of drugs. Now, if we got another 33 years without meeting, you'll be older than me the next time we meet. We'll have to see about that. All right, well, you take care of Captain Lemur eyes and... Good luck with the remainder of your life. Uh, that's kind of weird. I hope the, my life lasts long enough after I've been talking about old Judd Chav on this show. So you've been listening to Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. I am a real workplace lawyer. We dealt briefly with the issue of failure to hire, which is something that private lawyers really can't get involved in because there are a million reasons why somebody wasn't hired. And sometimes people just apply for jobs that don't even exist. Um, and that's something that that maybe the EEOC would get involved in or a government agency or if there really was a big group of people like a class action where women were being systematically denied the opportunity to be insurance adjusters like in the big farmers case some years back that's something a private lawyer might get involved in but if you have a real case about a workplace issue I do want you to call me off air at 877-525-0700 for a serious lawyer that knows how to get people to laugh and say the kind of ridiculous things that these guests say on this show, call 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700. Just to let you know, we do stream on YouTube. We also have old episodes on workplacelawyer.org or YouTube or KBC, you should catch up because we're already on the episode 24. Most of the characters and events we talk about in these shows are repeated. And I don't mean to offend anyone's politics by talking about what I do talk about on this show. That's one of the reasons why we make these fictional. Some of the things that happen at work are very sensitive and putting real people on and telling them that they don't have a case for failure to hire, that really might get them. And dealing with victims of sexual harassment is traumatic. And um, I think there's a very interesting psychology with sexual harassment victims. I think that um, the experts that talk about the things they will remember if there's trauma, such as a staircase, it's very important. and. Um, after practicing for 25 years here when it comes to November 23rd, and hopefully I will still be here then, I've dealt with a lot of sexual harassment victims, and um, I've spent my life with it. And the one thing I was glued to this week was 
the hearing. And I found personally the victim to be credible. And I found some issues with the person being accused. And everyone has their own opinion, but a judge has to have judicial temperament. And if they don't, and they're an angry, finger-pointing person, that's not what we want in our democracy. And judges have to make hard decisions, hard calls. They've got to have thick skin. There are a lot more people that make fun of the judge or write nasty rants about them than the average person, even more than me. And I will mention, we've got an excessive number of calls about whether Judge Chaw should be judge. I'm going to have those results tabulated. I'll get them on the website if need be, but they're just too many to handle. And I don't think we've ever got this many calls on this show. So maybe we'll make the next one more controversial. You've been listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. I am a real lawyer who has been representing employees for almost 25 years now, and I take my job very seriously. And this show is a little different than how I practice law, but I do have opening statements that will be along these lines. So tune in next week for the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio, KBC 790. It's been a pleasure having you listen this week. This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group.